Welcome everybody, this is going to be a quick video that is going to show you how to mock your HTTP client for your tests. Uh, we're gonna do a quick uh, TDD example of building up, you know, some kind of mock service that depends on the HTTP client. How do you do it? Uh, let's go ahead and find out. So first, uh, we're gonna need our bog standard test, so public void do. And because the example in this video isn't really any use case that we're gonna implement, we're just gonna create some bogus test cases. Uh, like, for example, returns null when 400, right? So status code is going to be 400. We are going to return null based on that. Uh, we are going to have uh, our service, right? So we are creating a new service, not a service container. This is just something that we don't have. So let's go ahead and create this type. Coming back to the test, uh, again, the service is kind of bogus, so we can call the create method on it. And uh, this is going to give us the result. And here we're going to assert uh, that the result is null, right? Because whatever is going to happen inside is going to trigger 400. Uh, so let's go ahead and create this method. It's gonna return some object. I think we're going to be okay with just a string. And I'm not gonna do Bob Martin's uh, silly approach. I'm just gonna go in and uh, basically say, right, so I have my HTTP client, so a new HTTP client. That's what I'm gonna put into this service. We're gonna create the constructor. We are going to uh, create this field right here. And we have our HTTP client, right? So your service is looking something like that. And moving this a little bit further, we're gonna make an HTTP call that is going to, you know, do whatever ad hoc call it needs to do here. We'll just call get async. We're gonna be attempting to call to Google, but obviously we're not gonna be. So let's just say google.com. This can be anything at this point, right? But uh, let's say response, if uh, response uh, status code and actually I'll need to await here. We'll grab the status code and it equals bad request, so 400. This is where we wanna go ahead and return no. Otherwise, let's return something we're gonna make this a task that is asynchronous and because of this, we will kind of just make this asynchronous as well and we will await here and just, you know, propagate the asynchrony. Uh, this is what we have at the moment. If we make this call, uh, if we would be relying on an API key or something like that, you know, uh, things would fall apart. Generally, if you have a well-defined service, if you're not just randomly making calls to the internet, uh, you would have an interface, but let's say, we don't. We want to test the actual service that is consuming an HTTP client that is going to be making those calls, right? So at the end, you're going to have some service that is making those calls and you need to test it. You have to go into the HTTP client and you have to override some methods and specifically it's the handler. So the last thing that gets called, if we look into get async and we travel further down to this get async, to this get async and to the next one, and then finally, we will be calling send async. It will rely on this core function and the core function again will go to the base class and to the base send async where the gist of it is basically that it's using this handler, which is the HTTP message handler. So this is the final thing on every HTTP client as it's going to send out the data and it's going to get data back. It's going to be the HTTP message handler, which is going to handle that. So that is pretty much the thing that we want to kind of substitute or mock. So let's go back to call uh, API test. We can still keep the HTTP client because the HTTP handler can actually be passed in the constructor here. So what we will do is when creating our mock, we will actually create a public class HTTP handler or HTTP client, whatever it was called. Let's again quickly take a look at HTTP message handler and we'll just copy the name and call it mock and inherit from this. And let's go ahead and implement the missing member, which is going to be that send async. Now, whatever request we receive here, we can return a specific HTTP response message, okay? So let's uh, be a little bit simple for now and we'll just say we want some kind of specific status code. So let's just say code here. This is the thing that we will want to mock. And by the end of it, we'll just say task, complete task or sorry, from 
result because we already we will have the final thing and we will want the HTTP response message right there uh, on here we can set things like status code and uh, can supply the code that we've in, uh, that we've uh, uh, supplied in the constructor and this is yeah, the HTTP status code so HTTP status code let's uh, do the conversion or uh, you know that's the thing that we can supply straight away here and I think that will actually be a little bit better so let's remove that there's our mock handler when we uh, spin up our service this is where we want to give it our mock HTTP handler and we'll just say uh, okay when you return bad request uh, that is what i want to uh, i want the null to be returned here and it's complaining about the signature here very lightly but we can go ahead and do that we're setting up uh, the mock handler to return bad request it's going to produce this response with the appropriate status code and uh, you know it's going to return null uh, let's go ahead and give this a go we'll run the test now let's say we wanted to do something a little bit more complicated and well <laughs> in what sense complicated we just wanted to return an okay with some kind of adjacent payload so copy the test when uh, 200 uh, returns json in this case we will be passing the okay code uh, but we also need to customize the payload that is going to be returned here in this case we can actually just go ahead and pass the whole http response message into the constructor and yeah that is something that we could seed so response right here we can create this and we're basically saying this is the response that you can have the code doesn't really matter at this point if a response doesn't equal null that means we've supplied the whole thing and that is what we can return let's go ahead and do just that again the whole nullable thing we can uh, place the question mark there but we can create a new http response message where we will have our status code which will be status code okay and then we will have the content which will be HTTP content. So now you can basically say new string content, no new uh, stream content, whatever you want. In this case, a new string content, and we want to supply some JSON, and uh, you know, <laughs> write whatever you want, but uh, foo, and then five or let's say forty-two. That's a better number. There we have it, and we can write a test like not null and equal because this is going to be a string and at the end we just don't want to just return this we want to do something like uh, go to content and read string async all of it and because it's a task let's not forget to wait on it so the final result should be whatever this is but returned within the result and now let's give this a go cool now not too complicated and the final bit that you're gonna want to do is when you're using mock queue you have an option of uh, doing a sequence mock so you can the, the more you call the same thing it constantly returns a different thing so this is pretty much the last missing puzzle is where we want to be calling sequences in this case again let's just create another constructor however you want to customize your experience for writing tests again i'm just giving you ideas you want to create a builder you want to make a pretty interface here you want to make this into its own package go ahead i'm just trying to show you the idea here in this case we're going to accept a parameters we will have our nullable array and we'll call responses uh, for this I will also need a count so this is just going to be a count uh, the current response that we are on so the, every single time we call we increase the count and then we're gonna do a modulo so we're always looping over the sequence uh, this will start at zero and uh, if we do have these responses so these responses this is what they're going to be and again we can check if we have the responses if they're not null we can go to the responses count modulo uh, responses dot length this is going to be our response a semicolon on the end and we can actually put plus plus here so every single time we fetch we iterate as well but we are never going to jump over the length so if we have two and the counter goes zero 
uh, we get an item, one, we get an item, two, it jumps over back to zero. So we're always looping over the first and second responses. So finally, this is the response that we want to get back. And let's just, you know, returns uh, JSON sequence. Uh, in addition to just uh, putting this HTTP response message there, we will give a second HTTP response. And arguably, we can always go into this constructor. We can go ahead and just remove that because this implementation should always keep looping over the same response. Coming back to return JSON sequence, I went to 100. Uh, let's say this is 66 bar. This will be the first response, not null, uh, correct. And then we'll just call it a second time. We will reassign the result and we'll just make sure that it's bar 66. Let's go ahead and run all of the tests and they're all passing. Now you can confidently, you know, take your service, move it to its class and pop it over to your business logic and consume it on that side. You know, don't forget to fix the namespace, etc. This will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions around this video or how to mock something else or how to test something, uh, leave a question in the comment section or come ask it on my Discord server. For all the patrons that are choosing to support me, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're not yet supporting me, please consider it. Otherwise, stay safe out there and have a good day.